Hello and welcome to Christie's Cropping and Creating. I am Christy Bolin. I live in South Carolina and I love being a Creative Memories Advisor. So normally I post my videos on Thursdays in the evenings and at this moment I'm not sure if this is going to be a, a bonus episode for this week or if this will be my new day for posting or if it will be my only video this week and maybe I'll go back to Thursdays I really don't know yet but I wanted to definitely come on and show you something that one thing is a bring back and another part of the bundle is a new and opposite from this one jumbo custom cutting system pattern so this bundle is only available until friday and i should have double checked to see if this is until noon on friday usually well noon central time that's usually what happens but Yes, it is until noon central time, which is one o'clock Eastern time. Most of my people are in the Eastern time zone. And so you have until one o'clock Eastern on Friday to get this bundle. If they sell out of one or the other, whichever piece is left over, you would be able to purchase individually. But since there's no guarantees that it's gonna be the new version, I wanted to come on and show y'all some great ideas. This should be a pretty quick video because I am going to make something after I show you my samples, but I wanted to, to explain the differences. If you're looking closely, you can tell the one that is being brought back, it has the wavy edge on the outside, right? And so the inside square is like a rounded corner square and you know with our custom cutting system since we have three blades you can cut three different sizes on the outside track three different sizes on the inside track so it's the same concept with the jumbos as it is with the regular custom cutting system this new frame is going to be rounded square on the outside so opposite of this one right and the wavy frame on the inside, again, opposite from this. So when I get my order, I will be able to make an outside wavy edge and an inside wavy edge using the other pattern. I can make a rounded corner square on the outside and a rounded corner square on the inside using both patterns. So also with this bundle that's exclusive to the bundle so you would have to get it by friday or um while supplies last so it could sell out before friday but when you get the bundle you get both this one and the new one you get this set of jumbo embellishments and you're also getting this little mini storage box so that you don't have to keep your blades in the cardboard box that they come in. And actually they might not come in the cardboard box anymore. I've saved mine for quite a few years. Um, but you get this little container. See how they're housing the blades inside that little container? There, there's the container with the lid on it. So it has a snapshot lid and it will hold your three blades in addition to some other things. So let me quickly show you some fun ideas for how to use this. The first way I use this, oh my goodness, which one do I show you first? Hmm, let me show you this one. So I cut out from the pumpkin piece of paper, pumpkin cardstock, I cut out a a thin frame. I'll show you this the 
what I used that thin frame on next. So I used my blue blade and then I used my red blade on the outside track. And so I was left with this orange pumpkin frame. And of course I just put it on a tonal piece of paper. So this is one use from that from those two cuts. I started to say from one cut, but technically it was two because I used the blue blade, then I used the red blade. So here's one. Here is the frame. See this frame right here mounted on the orange totally tonal paper? Excuse me, it was um, totally tonal pumpkin. But um, this is the frame that I cut out from this. And then I was going to mount my four by six photos. I apologize that this one has got the, the dimensions written on it sideways, but I didn't, I had already made it before I realized I was going to do two horizontal and one vertical. So this square came from the inside of that same piece of pumpkin cardstock. So I used one piece of pumpkin cardstock to make the outside frame and the inside square. And that left me with this. So I have this that was left over from the outside and then I cut out the inside square. So I have yet another page. So with those two cuts and well, technically now it's three cuts because I've cut out the square. I have the potential for three pages and as you can see, I didn't even put mats on this or this because I want you to just use your imagination and make some four by four squares, four by six horizontal or vertical photos. And then this one, I'm showing you the, the layout that I would possibly do, probably do. And I love hearts and it is pumpkin season. So it's great to have some orange colors and backgrounds to use. And that's why I chose this for my samples. So this evening, I'm going to use, this time I'm gonna make my first cut and I'm not 100% sure how it's gonna turn out, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna use this banner paper from Party Time Blue, and that's what I'm gonna make my very thin frame out of. I'm also gonna use this from Party Time Blue, and this from Party Time Blue, and then this blue cardstock will be my mats or my background for one of the pages. And, the reason I'm using party time instead of birthday bonanza, I'm going to be completely honest. I way over ordered party time. Um, I don't know, a year ago, maybe <laughs> it's kind of been sitting here. I didn't do a tremendous amount of scrapbooking last year. I did some, but not as much. And so I just really loved the collection. I didn't want it to go away. And so I ended up not using hardly any of my party time and I wanted to use it because number one it's still available number two uh, unfortunately my blade is a little bit dull and because I'm using designer paper it looks like it's going to tear if I'm not really really careful um, I'm waiting on my new blue blade to come in so hopefully I'm not going to tear this the whole way through this video. But um, if you're ever tearing when you're using your, your blades from your custom cutting system, chances are it is because you do need a new blade. Now, the designer papers are thinner than the cardstock. So, but it shouldn't be doing, um, it shouldn't be tearing as much as I'm tearing it. Now, another thing is these wavy edges. 
make it also a tiny bit more difficult to cut cleanly. But I promise you, I know for a fact my blade is dull. And I have ordered one. But I wanted to go ahead and show this idea anyway. So, maybe, just maybe, oop, I started to say maybe I can make it through without having to lift my blade and start again. And it may be that because I'm having such a hard time with this outside frame, I may not be able to use it on an idea the way I did with the pumpkin cardstock. I'll show you which one I may not be able to do in just a moment. I'm afraid I've moved my pattern a little bit too. I can't tell for sure yet. Okay, I did move it just a touch, but I'm just gonna snip that right there. This is the piece. I may not be able to use on a piece of cardstock. I might be able to get away with it because once it's away from the from the other piece, honestly, I think maybe I could get those pieces to lay down enough that it would be okay. So maybe I am going to be able to do that. In the meantime, notice I did not move my plastic pattern. And that's because when you're cutting with two blades, you want to cut with the blade that's the farthest away from the edge first, and then use the one closest. You could also say you're using the one, um, the biggest cut first, and then go to the smallest. That's because if I would have cut with this red blade first, it wouldn't have, would not have had as much to hold on to. Um, well, maybe that's not the right way to say it. The, the, the paper would not have had anything to hold it steady because I would have already cut the, the, the design away from the pattern and with me applying pressure on the pattern, whew, cutting those corners are very tedious. <laughs> um, but I'm applying pressure and if I'd cut the red first, then there wouldn't be anything that would be holding that still. So here is my frame. I have just a little tiny tail once again. Just trim that right off. Oops. I have a place down here at the bottom that's not completely cut through either. Now what I could have done is I could have jiggled it before I moved my plastic pattern or before I moved my paper. And then I would have known if I would have needed to cut through anywhere else. But no worries. Microchip scissors to the rescue. And now I have this thin frame to use on an idea or on a page, on a layout. Obviously, I didn't show you my ideas just a moment ago as a double page spread, but obviously they can be used as double page spreads. Just like using the outside idea, this could be next to the next one and vice versa. But you certainly can use them just as single pages also. So here is going to be the next idea. And this is what I'm going to use for my third. But what I'm going to do now is put my pattern, I'm going to center this back on my mat. And then I'm going to put my pattern back on it. And 
I'm going to cut. This time I'm only going to cut with my red blade since I want just a solid square. I started to say circle cut out of this. So I'm just going to cut with my red. Let me make sure I cut through this time. <laughs> and then right there where I started, I think I didn't get it through. I thought it was down here. But, all right, and rather than taking my blade back around it, I'm just gonna do it with my scissors again. That was really easy. Move my pattern. Here is my next page. I can put this on here like this. I can take this banner over to this page. And I pre-cut some mats. So if I want to do like my sample pad, I would have two horizontals, two landscape photos. I call them horizontal. <laughs> and one portrait photo on this page, like this. And for this one, you can do two four by sixes side by side uh, portrait style you can do you could do a big five by seven I didn't cut a five by seven ahead of time you can do if you overlap go in one either go in wide or tall <laughs> that's probably not the right way to say it if you overlap a little bit you can do over under landscape photos or side by side portrait photos. You're just gonna overlap just a tiny bit if you're gonna have that space in between the two photos. Because I think, well, actually, you might can squeeze them in there just against the edge of the frame. You know what? It looks like you can. Of course, I, I'm not checking my dimensions over here, but so it looks like you can. You can have that like that. Here I can have my three photos. And I did not pre-cut any white mats for this page. Obviously, I can't do blue on blue to show you the difference. Let's see if I have, I don't know what sizes these are, but this is a different shade of blue. Oh my goodness, it looks like they're two different sizes. They're even two different shades of blue, quite honestly. But let's pretend like these are four by sixes. Um, if you did something like this, maybe even. Let's see, here is a white one. So I don't know. I just wanted to show you really quick how you could potentially lay this out. So that is another option. And I know that with everything laying on top of everything, it's not giving you the best, the best um, visualization to show you. Here's an idea. Here's an idea. Here's an idea. And I'm going off the camera just a tiny bit with this one. And I'm not even going to take the time to adhere things right now. I will tell you that when you're adhering this thin frame, you probably, I'm not even going to say probably, I almost always use repositionable tape. And of course I use it on my silicone mat over here to the side. 
but you barely have space to ad put adhesive. So I would put it in several places around the frame. And then since you're using repositionable, it makes it so much easier to fix things if you don't quite get this laid down the way you want to. And that also applies to this thin frame. You've got the corners that are significantly larger for you to put um, a decent amount of adhesive in. Other than that, I would put it maybe on a couple of these peaks and be done with it. So I hope that y'all enjoyed this video and I hope that you will consider if you have not already purchased your Jumbo Custom Cutting System frame bundle. <laughs> uh, that's kind of hard to say. Jumbo Square Frame Custom Cutting System bundle. Remember, you're going to get one with the waves on the outside, one with the waves on the inside, and they will be opposite of each other so that you can then nest them. Like I said, when I get my new one, of course, my order's not here yet because I just placed it. But when I get my new one, I can make wavy on the outside jumbo squares and wavy on the inside jumbo squares. And so I'm really looking forward to being able to do that. Um, if you do not have an advisor that you shop with, please consider shopping from my website. It is Christy Bolton. Excuse me. <laughs> it is creativememories.com slash user slash colon. Christy is spelled K-R-I-S-T. Bolin is spelled B-L-I-N. If you need to reach out to me, you can reach me at, looks like um, my internet is freezing, so hopefully you can still hear me and see me. If it's my, my desktop and my email is christybolin at gmail.com. Again, that's K-R-I-S-T-I-B-O-L-I-N at gmail.com. And if you want to be in my weekly subscription class, you can ask me in an email about Christy's Cropper's subscription group. And I would love to have you. And hopefully... I will either see you on Thursday for my regular YouTube video or I'm going to switch to Tuesdays so that you have a couple of more days to prepare for orders where the deadline is Friday at noon central time. That's why I didn't wanted to do this tonight because I don't want y'all to miss out on the opportunity to get your very own jumbo square custom cutting system frame bundle. Y'all take care and we will see you next time on Christie's Cropping and Creating.